Hello again everyone and welcome back to Trick Bricks. I'm Jamie and today we're heading back into deep space as we continue our comprehensive Mtron retrospective, taking a look at 6896 Celestial Forager. This set contains 90 pieces, one minifigure, and retailed for $11 in the US. Once again, I'm happy to have the box and instructions in my possession. Like I said in our last episode, this is some of my favorite packaging LEGO has ever put together. I love the color scheme they've chosen to augment the set photography, and this classic yellow border just screams nostalgia. The back showcases a handful of interesting alternate builds, as well as highlighting the magnetic feature, which as you probably already know, was a staple of Mtron. As for the instructions, they're pretty standard with nothing too special about them, but I will say this. If you're collecting Mtron sets, I would highly recommend trying to get the physical instructions as well. Scans can be found online, but most of them are pretty low quality and can be difficult to follow at times. But enough about that, let's see what the Celestial Forager has to offer. When I was first doing research on this set, it seemed to me like it was going to be fairly compact and would maybe need to be relegated to the small sets episode. But upon building it, I was pleasantly surprised. While obviously not huge, it's definitely bigger than I expected and has some great little details and features. Beginning up front, the nose is predominantly made up of a printed, modified slope element that was utilized several times throughout the Mtron theme and lots of other places as well, just without the Mtron logo. And I like the method the designers came up with to position the control panels here at an angle, making use of the hollow studs on the side to attach this jackhammer slash chainsaw handle. The two 1x1 one one tiles are each different from one another, and of course, like everything else we're going to see in this retrospective, they're printed. You won't find a single sticker in the Mtron theme, which is awesome. There's just enough room here for your driver to sit, and as I mentioned last episode, every minifigure in this series is identical, so no need to go into a lot of detail on this guy. Here he's given a walkie-talkie so he can stay in touch with his comrades. Behind him we'll find this large inverted radar dish. And while we could certainly see this as just a sensor array for sending and receiving transmissions, it also doubles as a pretty slick steering mechanism for us humans. The way this is put together, with a hinge down here and then a pair of turntables, is simple but it works perfectly. And we'll see something like this again before the series ends, only on a much larger scale. The rear half of the vehicle is where we'll find the bed. A pair of fence elements enclose it on the sides, topped off with a few trans neon green dishes, and between them sits the magnetic lift boom. This kind of gives the whole thing a space tow truck vibe in my eyes, which is a cool idea, and makes sense when you take into account that pretty much everywhere outside North America, the Mtron theme was marketed as a rescue unit, so they'd probably need a tow truck. We have not one, but three magnets here, two at the front to lock the boom upright, and of course one at the rear for lifting cargo, which in this case is this little container with a cool printed door. The boom is built on a hinge, so when you're ready to lift the box, simply detach the front and swing it down. I'm always amazed by the strength of these little magnets. Inside the container we'll find a pair of trans neon green studs, which can really represent anything you'd like. Fuel, some exotic mineral, the Mtron equivalent to gold. As far as I'm aware, LEGO never specified what it was, but if you know otherwise, please feel free to enlighten me in the comments. And here's a forgotten piece of LEGO history. When I first began collecting this theme, I kept finding these little bits and didn't have a clue as to what they were. Turns out, this is actually a sprue that connected the two studs, kind of like they used to do for the chrome gold coins. I'm not sure when they stopped doing this, but it's an interesting little remnant of the way things used to be. And lastly, as I'm sure you've noticed, the whole thing rides on these large knobby wheels, which give it a decent amount of ground clearance for traversing all manner of bumpy alien terrain. 
This is a great little vehicle with tons of potential for imaginative play. And it can also be modified for many different purposes. I happen to have two of these, so I've removed the boom from one and use it like a flatbed for hauling larger cargo. Or as a troop transport. Some other mods I'd like to try are a fuel tanker and an intergalactic dump truck. As with all LEGO sets, the possibilities are only limited by your imagination. So I'm definitely a fan of the Celestial Forager, even more so than I thought I'd be. Sure, it's not the most amazing set I've ever put together, but it has a certain quality about it that makes me want to go off on little adventures with this guy, exploring new worlds and discovering what lies just over the horizon. And if you like what you've seen and want to add it to your collection, the Forager can usually be had for around $20 to $25 used, and between $150 and $200 sealed. There's lots more I'm trying to check out in the future, but that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up is always appreciated, and go ahead and click that subscribe button if you haven't already so you're sure not to miss a single episode. I'll be back soon, but until then, this has been Jamie for Trick Bricks. As always, thanks for watching, take care, and play well!